okay, so that's what my problem was. It wouldn't connect, and I had to go get it. And it, uh, okay, yeah, it makes it makes for better is, sound. Is that better? Yeah, that's much better. All you have to do is stay a minute, just take your time. The clock is ticking, so stay. All you have to do is stay. See, that was me. Doing the Bill O'Reilly right there. You know what I'm saying? So I am back. Yes, sir. What's going on, everybody? Lockout Men here. Back again for you guys with another Lockout Men podcast. So welcome. Welcome. I want to thank you guys for watching and listening wherever you guys at. Y'all taking the time to chill with me, and I appreciate it. Well, I am here up in Indiana, up at the Loves, just chilling. But tonight, I do have another podcast interview for you guys today. So before we get into all of that, I would like to say, if you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that all button. That all button works. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget to... If you want to hook your boy, hook your hook your boy up over here, you can do that. You can do that by hooking me up with some coffee. The coffee app is in the description, along with the cash app, dollar sign, lockout men. Well, today I am here with a young lady that I have found on Facebook. She reached out to me. She was very interested in the uh, the tragic story of Christina Summers. And she told me that she's a driver herself. Actually, she drives to the, uh, what's that, the Mercedes-Benz plant? Mercedes. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. She drives to that Mercedes, Mercedes-Benz Benz plant, and she goes up and down that route where that tragic situation had happened. So, what I would like to do today is to bring this young lady on. Today we have Patricia McTire. Let's welcome her to the show. <laughs> Let's welcome everybody from the LOM community as well. Thank you guys for being here. Patricia, how's it going? It's going good. All right. Going real good. So where 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 are we at in the part of the world right now? I was, I'm in Coleman, Alabama. Oh, okay, okay. That's what's Coleman, up. Alabama. That's what's yeah. up. So are you so you was so you was born and raised in Alabama or you, you moved to Alabama? What's your what's your bad story as as a young Patricia McTire? I was born and raised in Cobb County, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. See, I, and I moved here. See, I told you guys, this is like what my fourth, fifth, sixth, tenth Georgia peach right here. Georgia. I had, <laughs> yes, yesterday, Georgia. yesterday I had uh, I had Zippor. She Georgia. was on yesterday, and she had uh, she's from Georgia. So I got it. I got to get a. I got to get that jingle. I'm I'm gonna work on it this weekend. So. Whenever somebody say that they're from Georgia, I will Georgia. have it for them. So, Georgia. so Georgia, huh? So, what was life like growing up in Georgia, Georgia back in the day? Georgia. It was good. I went to McKittrick and High School, and um, it was just laid back, kind of little town, Powder Springs, Georgia. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's basically there's not much to say about that, that little town <laughs> so it was just um, it was just kind of a what like like a boring town or something like that i mean you, you guys had like did you guys have anywhere to go after school or something like that parties or anything like that no i just kind of hung out at the home um there was dairy queen everybody just kind of cruised around and around in the city Okay. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So, uh, so let's hear your, let's hear your trucking story. How, how did you, uh, how did you get started in trucking and how's your, how's, how's the journey so far? Well, 
I was a triage nurse for 20 years for Kenniston OBGYN. And um, back in 2012, I decided to change careers. And I went into trucking. I've been trucking ever since. And um, I've been everywhere. I um, did reefer division for two years, east to west coast. Stayed out six to eight weeks at a time and decided when I moved here to Alabama, it ended up being a local job everywhere, dedicated local. So I've been kind of stuck on the automotive end of it. Okay, okay. For the last, for the last five years. So how, how long have you been in the industry so far? Eight. Eight years. Eight years. All right. So how did you uh how did you obtain your license? Like did you did you go to a trucking school or did you go through a a, a trucking company school? I went through Roadmasters in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And then it was kinda of linked in with Covenant Transport. And that's where I went for my training. All right, all right. So, you know, Roadmaster is owned by, for you guys that don't know, if y'all know already, Roadmaster is owned by Warner. So, you, so when you went to Roadmaster, did you, uh, did you pay out of pocket or did Covenant said that they'll cover you if you come and work for them? I paid. I paid out of pocket. Oh, okay. That's a good thing. But That's a good you, you, thing. Well, you, You'd have to stay with them, I think, five years before they would reimburse you. But I didn't do that. Who say they, wait, who say you had to stay with who for five years in order to get reimbursed? Warner? That was back in 2012. <laughs> yes. Wait, Warner, so, said, Warner said in order no, to get, in Co order, oh, Covenant. So Covenant. Yeah, Covenant transfers. So Covenant says Oh, you you talking about the reimbursement. Okay, okay, okay. You already paid for this out of your pocket, but the company itself said that, okay, well, we will reimburse you for your schooling, but the the payout is, is broken up in five years? It is. You have to be dedicated to them for five years. Um, there's a new way now that you can get your CDL for free if you have no other um, degree or certificate. Uh, hold, hold on right here. Hold, hold here on. in Alabama. Hold, hold that thought. <laughs> hold on. Okay. This is so good. Don't you just get irritated when people just come to your shit and just and just be like, once you give them the 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 throat slash like, yo, I'm can't you see lights on? I got lights everywhere and all like that. Kind of busy right now, so yeah, this guy. Huh. All right, all right, I'm uh, back. I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> no, no, no. He's no. It's this guy just walking around in the parking lot, knocking on the truck doors. Like, the fuck, man. I mean, I already. Don't get me wrong. I already did my good deed for the day. You know, the guy came up to me, gave me a, you know, gave me a sob story, and I was like, okay, cool. You know, I had a couple of dollars in my pocket and some change, and I, I don't have a problem doing that. You know what I'm saying? You know. So I went in my pocket, gave it to him and all like that. He was like, thank you, brother. You know, he only asked for like change, but you know, I gave him all that I had. Like it was, like I said, it was about what, $3 and, and some change or something like that. And I went in my pocket and I gave it to him and he was, you know, he was thankful for that. So yeah, I, I kind of did my good deed for today. So now you got another dude that just walking around in the parking lot, coming over here, knocking on doors. And when you give the throat slash, like, you know, you give the throat slash that pretty much tells you like, okay, don't, you know, kind of busy right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, True. so yeah. So, so covenant, I, you know, I'm not surprised that, that covenant would do 
your reimbursement that way. Because uh, when I was with U.S. Express, they they did my re, my reimbursement. They my reimbursement through them was to get paid out in three years. But but what was Covenant doing? Giving you giving you like what fifty dollars every month or something like that? I'm not sure how they were going to work it. They were just, um, I guess they were paying a little of the student loan through my paycheck, but I had to dedicate it all the way out through five years for them to, play, to pay the entire thing off. So, okay, which is sensible. I mean, they're taking it out of your pay, but it's not really they're paying it. Right. I mean, so. five, five years, man. But wow. So I I hear I, you know, I, I talked to uh, a couple of drivers that went through Covenant, um, you know, as as their first uh, go around. And some of the, you know, when they went out with, tra- you know, doing the training process, some of them said it was OK. And some of them said they didn't like it. And Others had some real horror stories about it. So, uh, Covenant, was was you part of the training with two, or was it just you and the trainer? How How's your story was, with Covenant? It was me and my ex-husband. Um, he trained me, and um, we did reefer division. So, we, did eight, we were doing 8,000 miles. A week between both of us. Oh, okay, okay. East to West Coast. Okay, so yo, so so your trainer happens to be your husband. So he was working for Co- was. he was working for Covenant before you got there, or you guys went to Covenant together. No, he he had been driving five years prior to being a trainer. And then I went on to uh, uh, okay. join. Okay, okay. So he was our so he was already at Covenant, pretty much. He was. Oh, okay. So that so you figured, you know, you, you came over to Covenant to be with your husband at the time, your your husband at the time. So you decided to instead of go anywhere else, which was a good idea. I mean, you know, getting I mean, you got the best of both worlds. You got your husband, y'all, y'all married couple in the truck, and you getting trained. And all the money is going in the same bank. So, wow, that's a that's a trifecta right there. I mean, I mean, yeah. But uh, you did say your he was he's now your ex. So, what was <laughs> what was the what was the experience at the time? Uh, if you could tell well, us at the time, you know, being the husband and wife team, y'all pretty much was a team, even though y'all was, you know, he was a trainer and you was a trainee. But how how was the experience during that period? It wasn't good. I wouldn't advise it. Not not for someone that um has been training for the last five years and used to just having students. Mm-hmm. versus your wife um okay okay I, I, it was it was more run 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 and i, it, I don't feel like i didn't i kind of trained myself after i left there i went solo with the owner off okay okay because i didn't i didn't get much training from him and i'm not putting him down it was just more so like you said it was about money in the bank hold the steering wheel and drive okay but i didn't have any backing experience Okay, so you so be so. Let me put it let let me put it like this because they say that trucking is the is the reason why 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 some married people get divorced. You know what I'm saying? But you, I mean, you guys was together. So the 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 thing with him was kind of different when y'all two was like, was, was together and y'all wasn't on the truck. But then when y'all got together on the truck, his whole demeanor, his whole attitude change on you. It did. I become, I was the night driver out West 
in the night time, the night driver in the October weather. So I learned how to do winter weather driving. And um, I think what it was was I was running my whole 11 hours. Mm-hmm. And the dispatcher was giving him a little problem because I was driving through the canyons as a student Mm -hmm. and probably shouldn't have been at night and driving my whole 11 hour drive time. Okay. Okay. So So, it was, it was just a discrepancy on a lot of stuff. So on, on on this part, he would get, he would have you to drive. He would drive during the day. He, he would drive during the day. He would drive his a complete 11 hours during the day. And then you will come on at night and drive. So, in yeah. in theoretically, he was running you like you guys was teams in the in the yeah. sense of in in the sense of things. He wasn't he wasn't training you like. I mean, did he did he train you like you know what you need to know about the truck, the crawl com, how to do paperwork. Uh, Nothing, backing, nothing. backing, making sure, you, making sure you're in between the lines. Nothing. Nothing. I didn't even know how to open a double trailer door, and I broke my cheekbone mm-hmm. after I I left wait, out of the truck. Wait, time. wait, wait, <laughs> Patricia, you you broke your teeth on the trailer door. Cheek cheekbone, cheekbone. Oh, your cheek. You know how you got a door? Yes, my teeth. Because you know how it's got a double handle. Uh huh. Well, I didn't know how. To, I didn't even know how to open a trailer door. I tried to get him to teach me, but all he would want to do is sleep during me hold the steering wheel. And if we ever delivered, he would automatically get up and wouldn't let me do anything. So it was like well, I'm not ever going to learn. Clint, <laughs> Clint Kirker is in the <laughs> building, is in the building. What's going on, Clint? He says that it's normal to run as a team when you're a student. It's the only way that it makes the trainer's time worthwhile. But yeah, though, I I, I agree with you on that. I, I do agree. But still, the trainer is supposed to be like in the seat training while you're driving. You know, I'm I'm just kind of I'm just kind of flabbergasted so basically he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't running you as as a tra- uh, trainee he was just he was just pretty in other words I mean I don't want to use the I don't want to be harsh or anything like that but he pretty much used you pretty much he he did we were only married for a year so how, um yeah how, how long was y'all together prior to before you figured out that he was he was Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde of the truck. Five months. Oh, okay. 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 Well, I mean, it could be love. You know, like, you know, love at first sight. You know what I'm saying? They got they got TV series for that now. Nah, love at first sight. So but uh you you figured that you figured that it didn't work. So did you did you ask for a different trainer? Did you did you train out with him? Did you uh, did you uh, ask for another trainer? Yeah. What, what was your experience I, at Covenant? I did. So they, I did ask to be switched to someone else. Um, that wasn't a trainer; it was just another driver. Because I already had went through the the hours that I needed. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, and um, so they put me with a female. But she only had six months driving experience, and she didn't even know about bridge law in California. California, so I had to teach her that. So I did know that part because I knew before we crossed the scale, we had to have that. But this this kind of this sounds like a a mish mush <laughs> kind of situation going on over here at Covenant, man. It, this, they, they, I mean, you know, with the situation between you and your, you know, you and your husband or your ex-husband now, uh, you you with another driver, you with a female that did that that 
that only been has she been driving for three months or she been or she been training she been driving for a while and then started training for three months what what was that she wasn't training she just had six months driving experience i guess she had went out solo and they wanted to team covenant likes you to team most companies do because they make more money but on the truck itself of course but they put me with her and she really didn't know anything so I went solo with the owner op that didn't have a CDL so so he was an electrician I know so I got a bunch of bunch of it's crazy let's let's fast forward from that man because that's that's kind of crazy that that covenant would would put you with somebody that was less experienced than you you know i mean if you i mean I, i'm thinking if i wanted like if i want to team with somebody i at least want to i at least want to team with somebody that got uh at least a year of so right. you and know some what knowledge. I'm saying? at least thank you at least with some knowledge i <laughs> That's just me. I guess that's why I never. That's that's why I didn't go with the. I didn't go with the team thing because U.S. Express they wanted me to team, and I was like, uh, "Will you make more money?" Uh, no, I'm good. All right. So you so you done with Covenant? You you left Covenant? You you mentioned twice that you that you went owner op. So what made you what what made you go? that route and what was what was the route that you took to get the owner out you you lease purchase with a company you brought your own truck what what did you do with that no i had a friend that uh her husband worked in electrician union and he had bought his friend had bought a truck and he didn't have a cdl he wanted someone to run it so he had it all permitted and everything so i told him i'd run it i didn't have a quite a year experience over the road mm-hmm. so i went out um they were contracted broker out of rockin brothers mm-hmm. out of morton illinois mm-hmm. and i did paper rolls and uline and um like aluminum blocks out of junkyards and stuff like that recyclable oh. Okay, okay, that's what's up. So, so I I miss I probably misunderstood that. So you went with a owner op. You you yourself wasn't an owner op. No, I wasn't. Oh, okay. So I, that's I, I, I kind of misunderstood that because I thought that you said that you went owner op, but you you worked you you drove for him. So how long you uh how long you drove for him and. Are you still with them? I'm not. I did it for eight months. And um, and I wouldn't, I don't know, you get some that don't pay you correctly or they don't want to fix their truck. And um, and they just, I I got my experience. So what I was after. So I'm not going to say anything bad about it because I went to New York. Philadelphia. I stayed up north. So it was a crash or burn situation up there. You either get it on the dock or you don't get it on the dock. <laughs> yeah, you, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, sister. You you can keep the you 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 can keep the northeast. You can have all of that. I, I don't want the northeast. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> you hear me? I don't. With I don't like G. it when the shutdown. With the shutdown, I went up north because of the coronavirus. And nobody wanted to go to New York, but I did. They paid you extra to go up there too, didn't they? No. What? Do, wait. No. Wait. During the during the during the Corona season, that's what I'm going to call it. So during the Corona season, they they didn't offer you uh they didn't offer you extra money to go up in the in in, in those volatile areas because I know New York was was one of the hot spots. Yeah. 
I, I pulled for red classic for two weeks in North Carolina, and then that was up. I went over the road, and they sent me up north. And it, they were paying me differently because I'm on a, a dedicated local account, so I get paid by the hour. Mm-hmm. So when I switched and converted over this, they paid me 50 cents a mile. So I'm not really sure if they paid more or if they didn't. Mm. So I got 50 cents a mile. But I was stuck out there because the shippers and receivers, well, the government wouldn't allow them, but like, what, 10 workers? And they had to come in at a certain time. Uh, so I was stuck in New York parking lot for two days. So it was that bad up there. Yeah. Hmm. That was kind of everywhere. <laughs> Some of their showers was not open. Um, restaurants were closed. But I, I was prepared for it. I had suits on the, and the little hot plate. You know, for, you know, as much as they they call themselves appreciating what you know what we did during that little that little period at the same time we were still getting treated like a stepchild though you know we were you know we couldn't we couldn't use their restrooms we couldn't go in we we couldn't go in to eat we couldn't even go through the drive through there were so many drivers that had issues with restaurants not serving them through the through the drive through because you know for whatever reason you know it, it it took a couple of drivers to to point that out to get people to start talking about like hey you know we you know we you you wouldn't even have the food you serving if it wasn't for us doing <laughs> that you know we're you know, why everybody else is at home, you know, being safe and all like that, we still out here have to brain the have to brain the stuff for you guys and 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 putting our lives in danger while you guys sitting comfortably at home. We can't do that. True. It's true. And you know, North Carolina was a bad state. Um I seen eight drivers, truck drivers, cops were targeting truck drivers. They were supposed to leave us alone. They even gave me a ticket. Mm. Um, but they were they were not being and the rest areas were closed. And that there just wasn't exactly. and we were we were only essential drivers allowed out there. So I don't know why they were even we wasn't doing anything bad. It was North Carolina has, you know, that ball, that lane traffic restriction. Mm, that's crazy. Uh, you know, Clinton, and, uh, Clinton says, he just said that essential essential only means expandable. Exactly. I, I agree. I agree with you on that. Everybody from New York was crowding the road in North Carolina going down to the beach. Mm. It, was, it was worse there and shut down than it was. Not having a shutdown, Patricia. You know, people get into get into this trucking industry, this trucking game for different goals and different reasons. What are what were what are your goals as a truck driver? Um, my goals are what it kind of basically was when we had shut down, and my coworkers were sitting at home getting the unemployment check. And uh, I went over the road, not making half as much. And uh, it was worried about my family and my friends in the in the United States having the things that they need. Um, food. I mean, the the shelves got bare. It was almost into crisis situation. And I'd hate for my family or anyone, you know, to go without what they needed. So. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what we do. We want to supply and also, you know, make money to hopefully retire out of it one day, save up, but that's work hard and just. That, that's what's up. 
there was there you know you started you you started at covenant um and you went to drive for you know drive for the the owner op what are what are other challenges that you that you face when you when you started out other challenges uh delivering at residential homes <laughs> that was a challenge to me <laughs> that is I learned how to back. <laughs> you had ditches on both sides, and you had to, these little county roads in Alabama, and you had to back into their driveway. Okay. Just, so, so those. That's what I'm so, besides that, people are just, they still, they don't break check us as much and cut us off and do things because we got the cameras. All right, so those, right. so those the those the you know the minimum challenges challenges that we face on a day to day basis with with these uh with these drivers, not just not just the drivers in the cars, but the drivers that drive the trucks too. We we have issues on on that front also, man. So Patricia, being True. A, I oh go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no no no, go ahead go ahead. I, I had another driver encounter um, a guy that got his CDL online. He was from Mexico mm-hmm. with no training. He didn't even know how to back. And uh, the guy had to back it up for him. He said he got his CDLs online. How is that possible? How is that possible? But we don't, you know. we it's just we, a danger. We, we, don't, we don't know because, you know, last year, uh, there was a crackdown on the school that was given that was given away CDLs to to inexperienced drivers. So yeah, I don't know about how the online thing works, but you know I know they shut down. I know they shut down the one school that was illegally giving people uh, CDLs. So I'm not even sure. Well, I'm, I'm assuming that they had to like that they had to retest or some shit like that. That was in North Carolina because I had to go repo a truck. That happened. That school. Mm-hmm. Last year, I had to go repo a truck. Oh, okay. From um, a driver that didn't have license. Okay. Are they? I guess the government cut them off because they didn't do their correct road test or wasn't certified. What mm-hmm. happened was the instructor got mad and left with all the files, mm-hmm. and they claimed they had had done it at the school but i still would think you'd have to do it at a dmv right i guess there's some are certified i'm not sure okay but but you say you yeah, had to go you, I, you say you had to go in uh you had to go in a uh, re uh not repo a truck but you had to go and recover well the truck. It, i had to take it away yeah the right take it away from the driver because they weren't allowed to be in it so was it a, so that this driver did. so this driver was working for the company where you was at? Yes. And they were running with the truck. <laughs> wow. So they so, pretty, so they pretty much told him to stop driving right there and and just sent you down there to go and get it. Wow. Well you you can't, you can't really blame them though, because you don't want to be stuck out there. That's true. And not knowing out of state. That's true. I'd want to try to get closer to home too. So Patricia, being a female, so being a female, you know, females get a lot of shit thrown at them. How do you handle, how how do you handle when other drivers or dispatchers or shippers and receivers, you know, throw, you know, discourage you out here? How do you handle that? They don't. I, I, I work. Um, Really, I had it. They respected me, I guess, because I ha- I'm a I'm a hard runner. Um, on the weekends, if they have an emergency that a over the road driver can't make it into Mercedes, I'll just drop everything and go do it. Because you know what we do. I was on call there for a long time on the weekends when over road drivers wanted to go home, but they couldn't make it to Mercedes and home too for their weekend. Mm-hmm. So I would, I would go, re, you know, relay the load, whatever. But they really haven't given me a hard time. 
So okay. Okay. I work whenever they need me to. If they need me to go do this, and I'll turn around and go pick up a trailer if they need it or whatever. Now I know we uh okay. mentioned we we mentioned uh COVID you know the COVID season, um you know you went up in uh you went up in New York and and stuff like that. And now that you now you're running auto parts for uh, the Mercedes dealer uh, for the Mercedes distribution, what keeps you busy nowadays? And how did the COVID season affect you? You know, affect your trucking life. Um, if the hours are cut, um, we're I'm not running as many loads. I was doing three a day. Now I'm only doing one. But I still get at least 10 or 11 hours a day. But it's not like before I was getting 12 and 14 hours a day. So we were working six days a week. And now it got cut back to four days a week. Now we're back on. We're working this Saturday because Monday we had a holiday. Right. So Mercedes had a lot of their... um. The last two years, they've had a lot of um, downfall on them with the uh, magnesium bar blowing up north, mm -hmm. um, that plant, and no one else to make them. Um, that shut them down for two or three months. Okay. So we've been hanging on, battling it out for the last two years. And then COVID come around, and um, it's kind of used to it, so... It's been going on off and on for two years. Okay. So. Okay. So what are what are some of your pet peeves out here? Out here? Yes. What are some of your trucking um, what are some of your trucking pet peeves? Because I have a lot of them. How could you what give me an example? Because I really don't Well, one of my biggest pet peeves. One of my biggest pet peeves is people hanging out in the fuel island. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that. getting their getting yeah. happy meal. Yeah, that part. <laughs> you know, come up in a come up in a fuel island. You 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 get your fuel. Okay, I got you. I see you. I'm in a I'm right here in the truck looking at you. You get your fuel, then you walk away. Then you go inside. It don't it don't take that long to fuel, maybe about five minutes, 10, 15 minutes, but you take an hour. <laughs> then you come back out. True. You come back out. You hang up the, you hang up the fuel. You, you hang it up. Then you pull up, get out of the truck and go back in there again. Like, bro, what come are you out doing? With three or four bags. <laughs> like, bro, what are you doing? Come out. So yeah, that's, that's one of my pet peeves. My that's one of my one of my biggest pet peeves right there. You know, you go in, you know, I I, I get you. You know, I I I I go in there, get my little food, whatever, whatever. Come back out, hang up the hang up the hooks and everything, and then bounce. That's what I do. But you got people that come in, hang out in the fuel island, go in there, take a shower, take a shit, do. Do this and do that, and I'm like, bruh, come on now. Come some on. of them even take a nap. Yeah, some, thirty minute nap. Yeah, some of them bruh. do. Some of them do that, like, bruh, like really, don't, uh, don't, bruh. don't, don't, don't mess up the 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 fuel island. Just, just, just keep it going. So you know, stuff like that. What what irks you out here, uh, uh, Patricia? People can't merge on the expressway, on the highway. They cannot merge. <laughs> is that is that merging onto the highway or merging from the shoulder? Yeah. Because even off. The, the, even. The, the shoulder, that's another pet peeve of mine, too. You, the dude, you're on the shoulder. They, they taught me. That was the first thing I got taught while I was in school. Like, at least drive until you get up to speed. And then... Get over, but make sure you hit the blinker. No, what this dude does, what this dude do is pull right on to the highway and then get up to speed. Like, bruh, like, really, man, why bruh. don't do that? Don't do that. So, yeah, that 
that True. that hurts me also. That that hurts me, and that's that's another one of my pet peeves. So yeah, man, that's uh, that's that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, it is. So if you had to go back and start all over, would you would you would have got into trucking? I would. I've always liked it. Um, I just always liked big trucks, and I thought, well, that'd be kind of cool to drive one of those. And I did, and eventually. But it was just one of those things that I just thought was to travel the world, and it's just one of my, I guess my. Okay. Okay. Um, how do you what do you call that the bucket list? Yeah. So I achieved my bucket list. Okay. I was in triage nurse for twenty years, and I had enough of it, and I was like, oh, change over. We can do anything we put our mind to. So you was uh, so, so you say triage. So that means you 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 dealt with I uh, telephone. You 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 dealt you dealt with like gunshot rooms, stabbings. Mm-hmm. You you see? No, all it was a, telephone. It was what now? Well, we did. It was telephone triage, and it's a little different. You handle all the patients in the office, so the doctor can see their patients. Oh, that's it. oh. I had eight doctors. Oh, okay. I had eight doctors, five midwives. Oh, okay, okay. So, all right. Counsel, so, evaluate. Oh, okay. That kind of thing. Was you uh? So you you was o, uh, OTR at one point, but have you ever been in a situation where you felt vulnerable because you were female? When I first started, you have to toughen up out here. You have to learn to get streetwise. Um, it's not made for everybody. Um, you have to watch your back because there's people working in the, the truck stops. It's not just truck drivers. Mm-hmm. Um, even on side roads, um, you just you gotta be streetwise, pretty much. Um, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, so I was raised in it. If you're not raised in it and know things that you should look out for, you're to be more vulnerable. I guess, but um, I did have another driver one time in Indianapolis. I was, it was my fault that I thought something was wrong with my trailer and it wasn't. And he kind of showed me back up in the truck, but I used to reverse psychology on him and got him back out of my truck and locked the door <laughs> and yelled on the CB. But I mean, it happens because I maybe he's got, I didn't know the limbo out here you know i was new so okay, okay. that's what i mean by street wise okay, <laughs> you can't that's... leave your yourself open kind of thing that's what's up all right i i, I think this uh i think i'm gonna ask you this uh last question i think that and this will probably you know be it because you know i don't want to keep you i don't want to keep you too long i do appreciate you coming on and you know giving me your time and all like that you know you could be anywhere in the world but you're here with me so i really do appreciate that um patricia what extra precautions you take out here to protect yourself when especially when you're in certain areas while you're shutting down when I'm shutting down, I've shut down in some, when you run out of time, you can't really judge where you're going to go. I've had like Charlotte, North Carolina. I stopped at that pilot, if you know what I'm talking about, over there in the city. Um, I didn't know the area, but when you run out of time and you got to stop, you don't have a choice. You just keep your doors locked and you just kind of toughen yourself up and if they keep this was a, a drug person that was kept lingering in the parking lot. You just kind of got to get mean with them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just yelled at them, but you know, um, they'll usually leave you alone. Um, I don't go out of the truck at night at certain times as a female. As that, that could be as a male too. Um, they're not, they're not, it doesn't matter this day and time, male or female. Um, just don't leave yourself open. Okay. 
carry some mace. Best thing you can use in a truck is a wall spray. Hmm. That you know, I have I, I heard that. I I heard that. Somebody said uh somebody said to uh to keep a can of wasp spray in uh in the truck yeah. with you. So I you know, since you just you like the third, fourth person that said that. So I think I'm gonna get me a can of some wasps. Wasps wasps. I can't even I can't even pronounce wasp spray. it. Wasp spray. <laughs> It might be my Georgia accent. Wow. It might be might might be my my hornet might, spray. Would that be better? Might be my bad grammar over here. That's what it is. Everybody, Patricia McTire. Again, thank you for coming on. I do appreciate it. Um, well, thank you for having me. Thank you. Very welcome. What are some what are some tips uh would you like to share for aspiring women truckers out here? Um aspiring trucker women, let's see. If you're a hard worker, that goes for I guess just women and men. You gotta be a hard dedicated worker and um get your loaf there on time and you're you're good to go, pretty much. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's I, up. I'm not. I'm boring. <laughs> I don't have much <laughs> to say because I'm a I'm a hard runner, so I I can't tell you on the owner off part of it. But um, I would just say just don't let people run you over. You know, um, you got to toughen up out here change your ground okay. it's about working okay okay that's what's up that's what's up well again i appreciate you coming on and uh chopping it up with me and all like that so if you ever want to come back on again definitely definitely you know reach back out to me and we'll you know i always i will always give you my platform to you know to chop it up with me and everything sure. So, and if you know anybody wants to team and run hard, let me know. <laughs> I, yeah, everybody, if y'all want to know about that, she's available if you want to if you want to run. <laughs> but you got to be a runner, though. You got to be a runner. Oh, yeah. It's all uh, about some dollars. Uh, Clint Kirker says, tell her to always start looking for a place to park at one hour I mean that's your one hour warning. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's 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 one to grow on, Clint. But I, I start mine that too. So yeah, if you ever get in a situation, yeah, I, always look, you know, like maybe about an hour, hour and a half into looking for a place to park before your time runs out. I do. But it's also on the time of your delivery and pick up and <laughs> I got you. I got you. You know, if you if you wanna be 15 minutes away from where you pick up and be there a little earlier. I don't know. Sometimes you have all that day to run. Sometimes it's just, sometimes it's just hard to, it's just hard like It's that. a hard head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so everybody, if you want to come on and chop it up with me, you know, you can do that. You can hit me up in the Gmail. That's LockoutMenPodcast at gmail.com. Or head over to Instagram and get me over there. Hit me up in the DM. I appreciate you guys watching. So if you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. And for when I come live, because, you know, when I do these behind the scenes interviews, they pop up like just about every day. So come on over and find out who I'm talking to that day. You know what I'm saying? I do appreciate the LOM community being in here with me. That's Clint Kirker, uh, Shane Booten, Miss Chicago BBW, Don Schiller, and Serve Squad Productions. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate the support and everything. Uh, if you guys like what I'm doing and want to support me more, yo, hook me up with some coffee. Right now I'm drinking some water. But you can hook me up with some coffee. The, the, uh, the app is in the description. Or you can just make it easy for yourself and hit me up in the cash app. That's dollar sign, lockout man. Until next time, everybody. I am done. I am out. You guys take it easy, and I'll come back at you with another podcast interview. Guys, take it easy, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.